start supporting us. I commend this bill to the House. Yeah, yeah, well said, Andrew. Mr Speaker. Um, I call Chris Pink. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, for the opportunity to speak at this, the second reading of the Family and Whanau Violence Legislation Bill, uh, as it will be uh, renamed, no doubt, in due course. Um, sir, I'd like to um, acknowledge the remarks that others have made across the House more generally about the evils of domestic violence or um, family and whanau uh, violence, sir. Um, I don't wish to belabour the points of um, the um, particular evil that uh, is indeed the scourge of our society, um, except to say that, um, of course, like every other member of this House, I do acknowledge uh, the importance um, of that and, and therefore the need to do something about it. This is something, sir, it is something therefore that we must do if it is a useful and worthwhile thing in itself, and it is, but it's also worth acknowledging, I think, uh, and again I believe that every member of this House does acknowledge that there is much more that can and should be done uh, in this arena. Uh, let me begin, sir, please, by uh, noting that a number of different bills, excuse me, a number of different acts. Uh, will be changed by this bill, and it seems to me that reflects the fact that this is a complex area. Um, it's an area of our legal system where a number of different facets, for example, bail, uh, care of children, the Crimes Act and so forth, are touched by this legislation. Uh, so I acknowledge the work of uh, the officials, also the members of the uh, Select Committee who have considered um, all of those very diligently, and of course the previous and indeed current Minister for taking that comprehensive view to our legislative framework and our statute book to do the things that are necessary in order to make this bill work. Uh, my colleague Hariti Hipango, who has uh, serious uh, credibility and experience in this field, has talked about the main features of the bill, so I won't um, belabour that point except to say that I would like to focus on um, some of the aspects uh, that go particularly to the definition of uh, violence. That seems to me very germane, indeed crucial, to the way that the bill operates and the way that it will be uh, executed, so to speak, uh, in the field, in the home, indeed, uh, most often, uh, Mr Speaker. I'd like to focus um, in particular on Clause 9, which talks about amending the definition within the Act of psychological abuse. This is very interesting to me, Mr Speaker, as a matter of uh, lawmaking, uh, of course, in addition to the very substantive, uh, very serious substantive issues that are um, discussed and raised in relation to the types of abuse that would be covered uh, by this bill. One of these is the definition of psychological abuse um, as it reflects forms of abuse in relation to the elderly uh, and also disabled people. So, uh, if you'll allow me, uh, sir, I'd like to uh, go through some of the detail of that because it seems to me very important to the issues that we are trying, uh, at least trying, sir, to uh, rectify by passing this legislation, if indeed we go through to the third and final reading. Uh, in Clause 9, um, sir, we look at the meaning of family violence, and it's said in this uh, proposed legislation that Violence against a person includes a pattern of behaviour, uh, for example, to isolate from family members or friends, that are made up of a number of acts uh, that are any or all of physical abuse, sexual abuse or psychological abuse that may have one or both of the following features. And then it goes on to list um, two features. And I'd like to pick out the word pattern of behaviour, sir, because it seems to me very important that we're acknowledging uh, as a parliament, as lawmakers, that sometimes the nature of abuse is that it is effectively cumulative. And the act, uh, excuse me, the, the bill is quite explicit about the fact that a number of acts, when viewed in isolation, may appear to be minor or trivial, and yet the cumulative effect of those, or the pattern of behaviour, to use the, the wording of the bill, is such that that is uh, serious enough that we should consider it to be abuse, uh, and therefore that we should offer to those who are suffering such abuse the protections of this bill. <coughs> For the sake of completeness, and I think very wisely, the bill also does say quite explicitly that a single act may amount to abuse. So, of course, it's not just a pattern, but it might be a one-off instance of sexual 
uh, or other physical or indeed psychological abuse uh, that would be uh, covered by the bill. Psychological abuse is somewhat complex. I suppose it's less obvious potentially to those who are becoming involved in helping the victims of such abuse. It might also be less obvious to those who are suffering the abuse that, that they have in fact um, been subjected to psychological abuse. So it includes threats of physical or sexual abuse. Uh, and it also includes, particularly, we find in this bill, sir, in relation to people who are already vulnerable. Of course, by definition, a victim of abuse is vulnerable, but the bill does actually set out that there are particular categories of people who are already vulnerable and whose vulnerability is therefore multiplied uh, by the situation of being uh, abused in such a way as, for example, uh, whereby a person is unable to withdraw themselves from the care or charge of another and there might be the removal or hindering or the threat of a removal or hindering of an aid or device uh, that affects or supports that person's quality of life. So that example is important. It is important that it is an example and, and, and that we're not narrowing the effect of the legislation. Uh, there's been some considerable effort, I note from reading the commentary, to ensure that the examples don't limit the scope of the bill. And that shows to me, sir, uh, that some care has gone into this piece of legislation that as wide as possible application uh, will be had, and that is indeed a positive thing. I'd like to take a moment, sir, to acknowledge the fact that there are factors that are outside the ambit of the bill, not by reason of it having been drafted in a way that is limited, except to say that all law is limited in the sense that as a society, as a community, indeed as families and Fano, we must own the issues, as the uh, saying goes, in a way that acknowledges that with all the best will in the world of the Parliament, and it seems that the Parliament does uh, so far unanimously support this bill, that there are factors outside uh, the ambit of the law, things that we do need to take ownership of and do outside of the legislative uh, framework. With that in mind, um, I note that in the regulatory impact statement, there are a number of key constraints set out. Non-regulatory options were considered, but um, the scope of the review that had led to this bill uh, being crafted uh, was not um, focusing on those explicitly or exclusively. There was some discussion as well, uh, Mr Speaker, about the quality of the evidence base. And it was noted that uh, there are a number of range of, or excuse me, there is a range of factors that contributes to perhaps the lack of understanding of what family violence might be. An obvious reason for that might be because um, such violence takes place behind closed doors, almost by definition, and that there has been historically low reporting of such incidences. Uh, looking further down on the agency disclosure statement, sir, we see that it's noted that there will be, no doubt, an increased demand for services as a result of this bill. That is a good problem to have in itself if it's the case that uh, more services are required to give effect to helping those who are in situations of abuse. But we do then face the conundrum of being unsure whether an increase in services being required reflects the fact that there is better reporting, greater acknowledgement and indeed better assistance being given, as distinct from an increase in the rate of violence or abuse. So that is something that we must uh, remain vigilant um, about, sir, as lawmakers and indeed as a society as a whole. And it goes to the point that was uh, highlighted, I think, very well by various colleagues earlier about the name of the bill and acknowledging that uh, a disagreement, including physical, sexual or psychological abuse, is not merely a domestic matter, not merely behind closed doors, and that a man's home, or indeed a person's home, is not his or her castle in a way that should preclude us from taking an interest and taking action in these cases. Uh, with my remaining time, sir, I'll simply note that the uh, bill has undergone considerable scrutiny in its uh, time so far, having reached us now over a period of some months. No doubt there will be more that's appropriate for such an important area 
uh, of legislation as this, and I look forward to um, hearing from other colleagues and continuing uh, to see this uh, bill passage through the House. Thank you. I call Priyanka Radhakrishnan. Tēnā koe te mana whakawā.